Hi guys, Anton here from SA 4x4. We're back here at Hennibus 4x4 here in the Northwest, and today we're talking about tyres. It's a bit strange for us to talk about tyres, but let's chat to Bernie and we can explain to you exactly why we want to talk about tyres today. Bernie, welcome Anton. back, mate. Thanks, my friend. So, Thanks. what can you tell us? Why Anton. are we talking about tyres? Yes, I, it's like you said in the introduction, it might seem a little bit off camber or out of character to talk about tyres when it comes to recovery and the whole series is about recovery. And everybody thinks when it comes to recovery, I have to be stuck. Yep. Okay, so if I've got a flat wheel or I've got two flat wheels, am I not stuck? It's the same thing. Pretty okay. much, yes. Uh, so your, your first line of contact or your first line of defence when it comes to off-roading are your tyres. Uh, that's the only thing that's either going to stop you from going or keep you going. And um, tyres is a, is, a, is, a, is a very broad spectrum kind of subject. I mean, we can talk about tyres the whole day. Um, but the bottom line here is, you know, one guy likes a blonde, another guy likes a redhead, another guy likes a dark-haired woman. That's the way it is. It's personal choice. Um, I am the last person at the end of the day to say to you brand A, B, C or D is what's going to work. I have my choice that, that works for me and my conditions and for what I'm doing. So I'm happy with what I'm, what I'm using at this point in time. Sorry, just um, in, in, to come in there, what you were saying is specifically, and it's so correct, you're using tires that is correct for your purpose. And, and that is what a lot of guys forget when they go and purchase tires. Hey, it looks like a nice tire, let's buy this one. But is it going to be fitting in with his day-to-day Activities. Anton, that, uh, you're 100% correct because um, are you a weekend warrior? Are you a competition guy? Are you an overlanding guy? If you're a weekend warrior, you know, you need to go and buy a tyre that's going to work for you. Are you going to be driving trails all of the time? Um, are you using your car as a daily commute all the time? Besides the, the odd weekend thing uh, or the trail thing. If you're an overlanding guy, how, how often in the year do you go overlanding? Do you use that car? Um, besides just the overlanding, are you one of those fortunate people that can park a car, rig it and park it there and say that's my overlanding car and I've got something else that I run with day to day. Um, unfortunately, I reckon about 99% of the people cannot afford to do that. So your daily commute is also your toy on the weekend. So you have to find a happy trade-off that's going to work for you at the end of the day. I would recommend if, if you are a guy that's maybe once a month or twice a year go on holiday, why would you want a bunch of tire on your car, it just doesn't make sense, okay? Besides the fact that it looks cool and it looks macho, that's about where it ends. But it's going to kill your, your fuel um, consumption. Fuel consumption your is up, your handling is, is terrible, everything that goes with that. What, what people tend to forget, Anton, is that um, a tire, four pieces of, of rubber, the size of your hand, is in reality is about an A4 piece of paper. That's all you're putting down on the ground, okay? So now let's minus the tread pattern of your tire. So then we're down to a piece of A5 paper. Yep. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to the safety of, and of your family um, and your own, you want to renege on, I'd rather buy the cheapest tire that's available instead of buying the best tire that's available for me. Um, so that's why I say to you, tires is an extremely contentious issue. We could carry on for weeks on end and talk about tires, 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 tires until it comes out of your ears. So, um, it's imperative that once I'm out in the bush and I run into a situation where I, I have a puncture because one of our, our first principles of off-roading is to deflate a tyre to get better traction. And it's like we said in the, in the previous episode is that you cannot make a tyre wider, you're making the footprint longer. Okay, but hence the fact that because it's longer, you now have a bulge in the sidewall, the sidewalls are exposed. And that's where most punctures happen, not on the tread pattern as such, but normally on the sidewall. Okay hey guys, so now um, it's time to head off into the bundu or on your trail or whatever, and we need to start deflating tires. Now, if you have a look here, I use steel valve caps um, for a very simple reason, and valve caps are very underrated, guys. Um, I'll let Anton do a very close-up shot of this just now. This little steel cap, it's actually got a, a rubber o-ring inside. So if you do have a leaking valve, this actually stops it from, from losing pressure. Okay, uh, the other valuable piece of equipment that you can have on a tire uh, is the tire pressure monitor, especially off-road. Um, some of them are fitted on the inside, some of them have got a little screw top on the, on the top as well. So what I've done now is I've attached the ARB tire deflator 
And um, now I go in and I undo the valve and it gives me a reading here of 1.8 and I now want to deflate the tire. So I'm turning the valve out, I pull the back, it needs to come out a little bit more and off we go. I want to get to about 1.5, almost there. There we are on 1.5, once I've reached my pressure, I now turn the valve back in. Make sure it's tight guys, because sometimes if it's not turned properly, turned in properly, and you turn this off, the valve actually shoots out, and then you've got a bigger problem. <laughs> okay, there's that. And um, I have one of the toughest tires at the moment on the market I have here. It's got a very rugged sidewall construction. Um, it's a Cooper ST Max that's, that's lying on the table here. It's got Armatec carcass construction, which is a much stronger construction. This is also what is known as a light truck tire. And there's also a difference, guys, between an SUV tire and a light truck tire. So if you're carrying extra weight, you want to run with a light truck. It's a heavier tire. Fuel consumption, everything comes into play. So we talk about a strong tire. How strong is it? Okay. Well, let's have a look. All I'm taking is the normal ream tool uh, or the cleaning tool that we use when we repair a tire that's got a puncture. And let's see how much force it needs. And um, by the way, I'm wearing a pair of just normal working gloves um, because tires are messy. Can you see how soft the compound is? Okay, there's no pressure in the back. Let's see how long it takes for this to go through. No, that was too easy. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So that's just me and my, I don't want to say fat ass, but that's just me and my body weight on there. So add the fact that your car weighs two and a half or three tons. Add all the extra fuel, everything else that's on there. Can you imagine how easy it is to puncture a tire that is actually strengthened on the sidewalls? If you have a look at how easy that was. Guys, and that shows you how vulnerable your tire sidewall is and at the end of the day when we're driving you need to look where you're putting your your tires all right um, very few people know that the natural lubricant of rubber is water so if you struggle to cut rubber just add water so if I get a water crossing and I've got sharp rocks what's the first thing I need to be looking out for I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get tire cuts guys if I've got little stubbles like that and there's water and it's in the water, how easy do you think I'm going to get a, a puncture? So hence, walk the obstacle. Walk the river crossing or the water crossing that you have to do. So Bernie, warranty is gone then when... Warranty is gone. Um, out the window. And the reason for that, guys, is that we've just destroyed the construction of or the carcass of this tire. Um, and I'll explain, you see there's a piece of rubber here and there's a reason why I'm using this tire here today and I'm going to get to that just now. But anyway, so we've cleaned the hole and here I go with one of my, my plugs and you'll also see guys that um, there's an extra piece of, of equipment on this, on this tool at the end of the day. So we work it through there, it's extremely sticky. And it's uh, the one downside of the gloves, obviously. But um, I'd rather do it like this and have sticky hands. If you want to, I know soap and water fixes everything at the end of the day. Can you see this piece of, of added appendage here? The cheaper uh, pieces of equipment that you get actually does not have this. And I'll, I'm going to show you what the reason is for that. It's almost like a depth control. Okay. So now, if, if, I, if I really want to, I can go. Um, the ORB punch and repair kit comes with, uh, with a bit of lubrication. So I go and I just go and make it nice and slippery. And it is as simple as one, two, three, guys. Once it's there, I push it through. How deep do I push this in? And that's why we have that appenditure on the front. And you see what it does? actually stops it from going deeper all right okay. it adds a nice dimension i can also grab it there and what you do is once it's in give it a proper tug and there's your plug okay bernie now we're back from the bush what now or you've now fixed the puncture but you still got a flat true 
Okay. okay. So I need to reinflate that tire now. Okay. Guys, there are probably. I don't want to guess as to what, how many different kinds of compressors there are available out there. Okay. Um, and different prices. Different prices. That's that's the big thing. Uh, and 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 my argument about something like that, Anton, is, is you can't expect to buy Mercedes Benz and they, and they want to pay a Tata price. If you want quality, you're going to pay for quality. That's yep. that's the bottom line. Um, and there's a reason why something's more expensive. If it's a premium product, there's a reason for that. Okay. Um, my personal choice has always been an ARB compressor. There's two ways that you can do this. Guys, you can buy it as a portable setup like this. This is nice if you have more than one vehicle that you're using. Uh, or if you're in a, in, a, in a group setup kind of thing, it's because now I can loan it to you and I can, even though I hate doing that, I'm of the opinion that if you come along with me, you need to have your own gear, okay? Um, and if you don't have gear, then it becomes a problem. Especially like when we start getting to the snatch ropes and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, and I'm deviating now, so let's get back to this. Uh, so, guys, this is very nice. It's a nice portable syst system. Uh, it comes with the crocodile clamps. Um, it comes with a complete uh, pump-up kit. That's the extension pipe. Everything that goes with it. It's got a nice little switch over there. Plus, it's it's nice and compact inside the toolbox. What I've done with mine. So before you go that, I saw that this one has got crocodile clamps on it. Yes. Now I see some guys put on the Brad Harris plugs on it. You can. You can. What do you suggest? Um, I'm happy with the crocodile clamps. Um, it's 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 not it's much of a muchness. Um, at the end of the day, the Brad Harris or the Anderson plug is just a it's a lot more sturdy. Um, but you know, it's it's for something that you want more, almost like a fixture than anything yeah. else. This is just quick quick release. It's done. Um, it's it's very simple. But then you went the whole other way with your yes. There's compressor. a reason. There's a reason for that. And and the nice thing about an ARB compressor, is, um, ARB don't just make compressors. They also make diff locks. Yes. Um, air operated diff locks. So this becomes a dual system. Okay. So Birmingham, show us what you've got here. I've taken my compressor and I've built it into the engine bay. Um, I'm fortunate in the sense that it's 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 the petrol model Hilux. The diesel has got a massive air, clean, air cleaner that yeah. sits here. So um, it depends on space in the engine bay. But uh, to me, this works perfectly here, and I've dropped it in here. And I've, like I said, Anton, this has been in here for about eight years, and I've never had a problem with it. Never. Um, it's it, it, you know it's it's one of the few compressors that are made that can actually handle the heat from the engine bay. It can handle a bit of dust and a bit of dirt and a bit of water and a bit of mud. Um, and this car's been through it all. Um, so, like I say, uh, mine is here. And with a slight modification, I can actually utilize this to also use it as, as the compressor for my diff lock. Um, and that would only be on the front diff. Thing. But um, yes, it's, it's there and it's available. And for me now, all I have to do is kick it in. And it does. In and off we go. Okay guys, so it's time now to reinflate the tires. I'm taking off the valve cap. And what I'm utilizing here is the, the ARB inflator. At the end of the day, it's nice and digital. Turn it on. It's got different functions. It's on bar, in the PSI, and it can give you all the different settings, KPA. So we're going to bar. I want this tire to be at least 2.2 bar. So switch it on, and off we go. Voila! If I do get to a spot where I think, oh, I've got a little bit too far, I can actually deflate it with a button on the side here as well. But let's keep on inflating our baby. Guys, and just the thing about tires. Tires um, being a critical component on your car, you need to manage your tires, all right? Especially when it comes to rotation of tires, etc. Um, look after your tires, guys. If you look after your tires, they'll look after you. They won't let you down. Hey guys, to use this is actually very simple. I mean, every so often I can just check what the pressure is there. We're on 1.95 and we carry on. And there I go, 2.2, .2. simple. Guys, today we had a look at a lot of recovery options for your tires. So tell us in the comments below about your experiences with your tires and how you got out of sticky situations. Subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.